Today we are going to try out the Direct to Film Black Powder. So we have done a DTF hack, which is direct to film, but we've used our sublimation printers to pull it off. And we've been doing that with this clear powder right here. It says it's white, but it's clear. And we've had a ton of questions on this black powder. So we thought, let's do it. Let's try it out and see what happens. So one of the questions is, with the black powder, does it work on darker garments? Now, the, what the packaging does say, or when you go to purchase it, it's gonna say that it is for dark garments, but that is if you are doing a true direct to film um, design, if you will. So if you were using a direct to film printer, you would follow all of those directions. But when you're doing a hack, you're definitely not going to. It's kind of all up in the air. So what this is for when it comes to a direct to film printer is this is supposed to not leave like a clear residue or white residue around the dark garment because you have that white backing from that kind of printer. Now with sublimation, you don't have white. So I've been getting a lot of questions with this powder here of how does, where's the white coming in? Like I've, I've miraculously made this white sublimation ink, but I truly have not. When it comes to a design, if you have any white in it, if you use a white garment, it will look like the white is there, but it's not, it's just the garment. So for example, I had done this gray sweatshirt and because of the lighting, it looks like it's white, but it's gray. So definitely keep that in mind. If whatever is supposed to be white, if I use a blue t-shirt, it's gonna be blue. So those are things to keep in mind. So the powders that I've been using, lots of different questions, so I thought I'd answer everything while we're here. I've been using this powder right here. I'll drop it down so you guys can see. It is by Ghidorah. It's my favorite. I love it. It's gonna last you a long, long time. So whenever you're using this powder, whatever's remaining, put it back in here. And like I said, you can make so many, especially with this hack. Now, if you had a big printer, you'd probably go through some of this stuff. So I use this and then this is the film I'm using. I'm actually gonna pull this out so you guys can see. This is the brand, I've been having a lot of questions here. We link you to whatever is in stock that we can recommend. So you wanna make sure, don't look for it to just say pet film because pet film also means acetate and things like that. So make sure that it says that it is geared for DTF, for direct to, um, see where it says DTF right here, DTF printer. Make sure it says that somewhere before you make that purchase. So this one has been out of stock for a long time, but recently I noticed it was back in stock for a short time so always check that i'll have a link below if that one's not in i'll have a second link for you guys to use as long as it says it's dtf film you're good to go so you don't have to use the same brand that i am and whenever you purchase it it should look like this so it should look milky on one side which is like a gloss and then one side should be matte you are printing on that matte side now another question I've had recently is, can we reuse the film? And I'm gonna take a look at it and show you today. With sublimation, it does leave that ink on here, so you cannot. But I have noticed with an actual DTF printer, there's nothing on here. So I don't know if you would be able to reuse this. It's almost like it'd be amazing if you knew somebody with a DTF printer and say, can I have all of your scraps? film because I think that we could reuse it. All right, so let's go ahead and get started here. Like I said, I'm using the brand of this, doesn't even say, but I will link you guys to the exact one that I purchased. And I've also been seeing some stuff about, we got some stuff over on our um, TikTok. There was this one woman that had came in. Now, yes, you should use, whenever you're using any sort of powders, this would be the same. Do you guys remember with it's still out there, but with uh, scrapbooking, there is that powder that you guys can use a heat gun with to add that clear coat. I'm trying to think of what it is. Somebody let me in the, know in the comments below. Stuff like that, they don't tell us all the time, but you should know with chemicals, you should definitely have a face mask. This is just adhesive is all it is. Um, so you definitely do wanna be in a well-ventilated area but you can definitely use this, all right? So they use it with the big printers. We can definitely use it as well. So always make sure you're taking those um, extra precautions. But like I said, at the end of the day, it's just adhesive. So here we go. So let's get going. The design that we're gonna be using today is this one right here and it's completely free. Now you ask me, Crystal, if we're gonna be using a dark garment, we wanna see some color, right? Well, I was challenged here. So we, when we work with the team and um, we come up with which designs, 
I was challenged here to use this one. So I'm going to be able, I'm gonna use it on a white garment. So we're gonna test to see, cause I'm curious with the black ink, would it make the black ink on here pop even further? How does that work? And then with the dark garment, is it gonna work? So what I've done is I've taken this design over here to Canva. And so we have the one that we're gonna do on the white garment. So we're not gonna do anything to it, but with this one here, so I wanted to show you guys. In Canva, what I did was I went up to edit image and then you can come over here and add shadow. So I went to glow and then I changed that color to a pink. If you double click on it, it will bring up options here. I changed that transparency for this design here, which I've already done. So it's trying to show it again, but you can change the transparency of that. So like I said, it's trying to add another black layer. So you can add multiple of these. Um, so you can change that. I added the transparency to like none. I want no transparency. I want to make sure you can see it full, full. You could change that blur. So there's no blur like that. I'm going to go ahead and hit cancel, but you can also change the color. So I changed mine to pink. So if it makes this pink pop on the t-shirt, then it's going to work with anything. So if I had a Christmas Santa that had a red hat, and all these colors, everything's going to pop through. Obviously not white because once again, white is not, there's no white in sublimation ink. If you guys are keeping up here, <laughs> let's keep going. All right, so a lot of information to fill in here. We're gonna follow through the way we always do. So we're gonna be using this, our powder, and then we're using some tape here. You wanna use some painter's tape to tape this to run it through the printer. I've also had a lot of questions on can you use an Epson? And yes, you can. Now, it may be a little bit different. I've heard that you can pull this straight through an Epson without the paper behind it. I've seen where people even just set the paper behind it and then it pulled it through, not taped through it. Um, and another thing I'm thinking that you should be able to go to your settings and maybe change it to a photo paper just to give it that little extra grab to pull it through. Um, or maybe like a really light one so it has that extra grab to grab it through. So, so pay attention to that until you kind of figure out. Like I said, all printers are different, but for the sawgrass, this is the way that it works for me. All right, so now we're ready to send it over to the printer. I already have both designs here. So to see both, you can go to jobs and you can see that I have both of those here um, and I'm gonna print them the same way. So a few more questions that I've been getting is, what is my settings? My substrate settings is polyester. My paper is True Pix Classic because that is the paper that is pulling through. It's just how I leave it. Tray one, high quality. Then my color is always set to vivid. So if you've ever noticed your colors may be a little bit dull, change it to vivid. That's the only way that I print. Once you set these settings, it's always gonna stay there until you change it. But like I said, I am printing polyester and then True Pix Classic. It's what's working for me. All right, so before I hit print because it'll send it to the printer, let's go ahead and take down our paper to the transfer film. Now, since I am pulling these both through here at the same time, I'm going to go ahead and use two pieces of paper. Normally, I use that same paper that has the tape over and over and over again. Um, and you can just use copy paper for this. I would recommend using laser paper because it has that same thickness. Don't waste your sublimation paper. I am today, but don't do it. All right, here we go. So we're going to take some tape and you want some the exact length. You can always remove any excess, but you want it to go all the way across here. So what we're going to do here is we are going to line up a piece of paper to the film, you wanna have the mat side up, right? And so now we're gonna tape it. All right, so I've pulled in a piece of parchment just to kind of help me stick this here. And so I am going to start, you can just start with your, um, move your film up here. And when you do this, you want as little as you can in the front. If not, it's, it could get on your design because if your design is going from side to side, um, that ink could get on your tape. And when you remove the tape, your, your design is gone. So we're gonna try to get as little as we can on the front and we want the majority on the back. This is just to help us pull it through. So you guys can see there how much I got. So about a quarter of an inch. And what I do to just make it easy is I went ahead and I fold this over just to get that crease mark so I'm not fighting with it with the paper. Then you can line your paper up. Just kind of butt it up against there, making sure everything's lined up together. We're gonna make sure everything's nice and straight like that. And now I'm gonna go ahead and trim off the excess tape. Then I'm gonna repeat the same process for the next one. Now that we have both of these ready to go, the way that we're going to load both of them in the printer is like this. So we're gonna stack them right on top of each other with the paper up. So you want your paper sides up because your printer is gonna suck it through like this. Now, if I was going in through the back side of my printer, I would want the film up because it would print it through this way. And then, um, like I said, because I'm going in the drawer and it pulls it up this way, paper side up, film, all right? So I want the, the tape 
inwards. So when I load this, the tape is going inwards. It would be the same thing if I loaded it like this. All right, so we are gonna open it, load it in, and we're ready to hit print. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and hit that print button. So now while those are printing, we're gonna go ahead and prep up because we're gonna need a piece of parchment. I'm gonna use two, one for each color. Um, so what I like to do is already have my, um, I like to already have this stuff ready to go. So we're gonna open this one here. Oh, by the way, guys, I love it. I found this little bitty tiny scooper inside the other day. It was down in there. I was like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. It's almost like baby formula that I found this in there. You know how it's like hidden down in the can? And so I was so excited. It's in a little wrapper. So if y'all own this, dig down in there because you have one. All right, so well, let's go and open it. I have not even opened this stuff. I wanted to wait for y'all so we could see, is it black? What's going on? And I'm sure it is, but this one says it's white and it's clear. So, you know, so let's go ahead and get this one. Trim this guy off. All right, let's get back at it. And let's take a peek inside. And there we go, it is, it's black, it's black powder. So let's go ahead and take our first one, which this one's gonna be with the clear. So when you work with these, what you're gonna do is you're gonna flip it up like this. We're gonna, you wanna go ahead and do these right away. Don't let them set aside. You wanna do it while your ink is wet. And so if you have any sort of ink that gets on it, like you see how on the edges here, I'm gonna go ahead and trim that off. It doesn't have to be perfect. So I'm just making sure no excess ink and I'll get those out of my way. So we're gonna start with this one. We're gonna powder this one white. So you're just gonna get some powder from one side. It don't take much. And like I said, that remaining can go back in. So we're just gonna go ahead and quickly get this ink all over. All right, so it should look something like this. You just wanna make sure it's all on there. And then we're gonna go ahead and set this one out of the way. We're gonna go ahead and put our powder back in here. All right, for our second one, you can see that little pink. Hopefully you guys can pick up that pink. And like I said, I figure if, and remember your colors come in duller whenever you first print. I figure if it can show this pink here, it should show any color, right? So let's go ahead and add that black powder. And it should work the same way. This one we're just gonna sprinkle a little bit on top. It's the first time I'm using it, so cool. All right, here we go. We're gonna sprinkle it around. We're gonna cover everything so you guys can see where everything's going. So you just wanna make sure everything is coated and you can just kind of work everything back and forth. Like I said, it doesn't take a lot. This is so cool, it is so cool seeing it all in black. You know what I didn't do? Oh my goodness, I've already messed up. I gotta print another one. I did the one clear, I'm not doing clear. <laughs> I'm not doing clear, we're doing all black. So I'll print another one for whenever we do our clear one. So let's go ahead and press this one and see what happens. Same thing, I'm gonna put the powder back in. All right, so using that same paper, the one that didn't get ink at the top, and they have this straight up. And now I've had questions about, can this mess up your printer with the powder? The powder does not go inside your printer at all. So do not put this inside of your sublimation printer um, and it will not mess your printer up. All right, so now I'm gonna load this and we're gonna print it again. All right, so let's go ahead and hit print. Now what I will do, this is actually gonna be a perfect test anyway. So we're gonna see if there is a difference. When we do the white t-shirt, we're gonna see, is there a difference? Does it make that black pop more than the clear um, on the white? So we'll, we'll see what's gonna happen. I'll go ahead and do both. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and do this. Like I said, you wanna work pretty quickly. So don't just let it sit there and come back to it in 10 minutes. So like I said, just kinda have everything ready to go before you print. So let's go ahead and start off with our black. Now keep in mind, this is 100% cotton. These are Bella Canvas 100% cotton. So the way that this hack works is it allows you to sublimate, if you will, on 100% cotton. Not only do I think it's like a sublimation hack, I think it's a DTF hack. The direct-to-film printers are like $20,000. They're a lot of work, they're a lot of money, they're more industrial, if you will. This allows you to get that same effect they feel and look the same. And I'm telling you, they outlast wash after wash after wash. So 
Let me know in the comments below, do you think we're gonna be able to see that pink show up on the black with the black powder? Once again, I have already tested the clear one on a black tote and it did not work. The color went in, which gave you a tone on tone and that's what I feel, but you guys let me know in the comments below, what do you think? Cross our fingers, here we go. And then also, do you guys think there will be a difference when it comes to the white t-shirt? Same design, just different coatings on the back. So let me know about that. So far, what you can see really fast with that clear versus the, the black, you can see that it is darker. So I do think it is going to intensify that black. So we're gonna find out. Here we go, starting out with our, uh, our darker garment here. We're gonna do just as usual and we're gonna remove any sort of moisture just for around five seconds or so. I am using my Cricut Easy Press. I've done this with both the Cricut Easy Press and the Big Heat Press. The, um, the quality of the t-shirt and lasting through washes and all of that is the exact same. I'm using the exact same time and temp, 385 for 40 seconds. All right, so you're just gonna go ahead and pull out that moisture. You wanna let it cool back down. One question I've been getting is, do you have to let it cure? And what does the cure mean? So this one is the one that's gonna go on this one with the powder straight up. Curing means hovering your heat press over it for, you know, let's say 10 to 20 seconds, maybe even up to a minute. What that's gonna do is melt those powders. So it's gonna start to melt the powders. I don't do that. If, say for example, I was gonna sell my transfers and you need to melt them, then that, yes, you wanna cure it because your powder's gonna come off in the, um, in the mail, if you will. But if you're just putting this straight to the t-shirt, you don't need to cure. So curing is just melting the powder, if that makes sense, creating that adhesive. So we're not gonna do that, which I did. I hovered for a second, but it still was not enough to melt the powder. I'm gonna go ahead and line this guy up just like that. You wanna make sure don't move it around a bunch because that powder can fall off. You can add a piece of tape, but I'm not going to. I think everything should be good to go. We're gonna go on top here with a clean piece of parchment paper. Make sure there is no powder in sight because you don't want that to stick to the bottom of your um, pattern here. I haven't had any issues, but just double check yourself. I said it today because I noticed that I've got some of that just floating around here. But like I said, there's no difference using this because it's an adhesive than using the one that you would get, say for example, at the craft store that you can put on say for example what is it it's those ink pens and there is like an ink pad and all of that stuff i don't know why i cannot think of what that is called today but anyways it would be no different now i have thought okay can we use that powder because there's pinks there's whites there's all of those things but you can't because that's hard it's going to give it like a a rock solid feel and you don't want to do that this right here it feels soft it feels like a super lightweight um HTV, but lightweight HTV. All right, here we go. So it's on here. So far, I do not see the pink coming through. I'm only seeing black. So we're going to see how that's going to look here in a minute. The way that these work with the hack and with any, I think even if it was detail, you have to let it cool. So these have to come to a cool. So you want to let that make sure this gets completely cold. I always recommend either right before it's cold or cold. So really honestly, just let it cool down to be safe. If you have something like a granite countertop, you can go ahead and move your pad out of the way because that's going to hold in that heat, flip it over, and then just kind of rub it out to get to get this to cool down. So I'm gonna let this cool down for just a second and we'll get ready to peel it. Now, before I do peel this, I wanna mention that we do have another video coming out. And if you're watching this, it may already be out, uh, but it will be coming soon if you're just watching this when it first came out. We do have another hack that we're fixing to try that's gonna allow it to give us a uh, white background on a black t-shirt. We're working on it. So stay tuned to see how that goes. All right, here we go, moment of truth. So this is the first time I'm using black powder and I will say it's not peeling as smooth and I've let this completely cool down as the white one. This is a different brand as well, but I don't think it would even matter with the brand. So it's giving me like a tone on tone so you guys can see that leopard print, but I don't like this peeling part. Um, and like I said, this is a different brand, but it's black and I just don't know, I'm not a fan of it. Now we'll see how it shows up on the white, but all you're gonna get is a tone on tone. So the black powder is not going to help those colors pop on a black t-shirt. I really had that feeling about it, but you guys have been asking. So here is, the proof is always in the pudding, but you do get a tone on tone. So if you are somebody that likes a tone on tone look, um, it's very trendy. It was trending more towards the summer. Like if you take, um, say, a brown t-shirt and you do brown ink and all of those different things there is 
pink on pink, whatever, but it's called tone on tone and it is really cool. I just don't like the frayed parts of it, if you will. I didn't like how this stuck. And to smooth that out, let's try to do it with a parchment. Also, to those of you guys that have been asking about reusing these sheets, you can see now why, because it does stay on there. So let's try to smooth this just a little bit. I put my parchment back on top, and then I'm just gonna pop this back on for just a few seconds, enough to just kind of really smooth everything out. And I almost feel like going back on top just kind of blends it in a little bit more. So like I said, this is a tone on tone. Um, I don't know. You guys let me know in the comments below. Would you wear something like this? I'm not a huge fan of it, but that's what's gonna happen if you use the black powder on a black bar. Right. So now let's try it on the white and see if it helps it pop more. Um, and let's just see what happens. All right, so moving right along, let's go ahead and prep up this t-shirt here. So I'm gonna do one at the top and one at the bottom just so we can test it out, all right? So we are gonna go ahead, and I would do two separate t-shirts, but I don't have it right here. And last minute I've decided to try this, so here we go. So we're gonna go ahead and get this. This is the black one, so once again, you guys can see that. The white, which is technically clear, you can see how much darker that black ink is. Um, so let's see how this works over here. Very carefully, we're gonna line this guy up here. Cover it with that parchment. Now I moved mine around, so I'm gonna have some excess powder, and I know that from my design. Um, so you really don't wanna move these once they're down, but I started thinking, I was like, I probably should bring it down a little bit further, but I'm not actually wearing the t-shirt. So I'm like, Crystal, this is a test t-shirt, let it go. All right, so 385 for 40 seconds. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and lift this. I'm just gonna scoot it up so you guys can see the little dots around it, which I'll show you guys closer here in a minute from where I moved it. So that's what happens if you shift. So if you are somebody that's nervous about placement, definitely cure it first. Um, but this is the first time I've actually made a mistake by trying to shift that over. All right, so, and you can actually see it because it's black. Where this one, if I made that mistake, it's clear, you wouldn't even notice. All right, so we're gonna move that guy up. I'm gonna smooth it out again. We're gonna go back on top. Once again, this is the white one, which I call technically clear. And then we're gonna cover it again. Same thing, 385, 40 seconds. So whenever you guys look at this, remember black is on top, white is on the bottom. All right, so we're gonna lift it. And then the same thing, we're gonna go ahead and let this one cool. All right, so I think we're good to go. These are completely cooled down. The black one's on top. We're gonna go ahead and peel. So you guys can see I've got a little bit of a tug there. I'm thinking it's the brand of that powder. I'm not a fan. I, do, I know, like I said, I will give you all the link to this so y'all can see it. But honestly, if it was made for one, I don't think that you're gonna need that black. We're gonna see when we pull this. But I do believe this one makes a black one and I really wish I'd have paid attention and got this one. Um, but if you guys are gonna be trying this DTF hack, you're purchasing this one, which is the clear one. It may say white. I have the direct link for y'all. This one's amazing, it's gonna last y'all forever. So even if you can't find the exact film that I'm recommending, I um, mean, you have to get a different brand as long as it's the film, make sure y'all get this powder. I have not seen it sold out yet, and it's going to, I think it's around 30 bucks, but it's gonna last you the entire time you do your DTF pack. All right, so here we go. We're peeling the white clear, look at this. See the difference when I peel? I'm not struggling. So that's something to note too. This one right here, the texture is really, really rough. So if y'all are having any sort of like, say for example, y'all have tried this hack and you're like, it's not right, it's, you know, it's rough, it's this, it's that, it's peeling, it's this. It may be your powder. It may be the powder you have chose. This is the first time I've tried a different one and I've, I'm hearing some of the things that I've heard from other people and that's it. This powder is yucky, yucky, yucky. I can definitely feel some really rough texture. It was super hard to peel. Um, it did make it a little bit darker so y'all can notice that. Really pay attention here with these blacks. This did come in darker so I would definitely purchase the black in this brand here, the same one as this, and you should be good to go. But it should feel like HTV, but really, really light. You guys can see that movable here. Um, this has that same movement, but this one, it feels like texture, like a screen print texture, if you will, um, where this one just feels super, super smooth and buttery. Even when you wash it, it feels the same, but it just feels like a really, really light HTV. But you guys can see where I move those powders around. Hopefully you guys can see that there. You guys can see the little sprinkles, but you guys can see those black squares. So you guys be the judge. This is the white clear one on the bottom. This is the one on the top. You guys can see it is ever, ever, you can even see from the trees. 
ever, 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 ever so slightly. So really honestly, don't even mess around with the black powder. Just stick with that clear white. It does not work on the black. If you guys are using a true DTF printer, yes, of course it will because it has white ink on the back of the design. So there you guys go. I hope this has answered some questions. Um, I like to test these things out for you guys so you don't waste the money because like I said, these are around $30 and I don't want you guys to waste your money trying it out. So get rid of this guy and stick to this one. I promise you guys are going to love it. And I've told you guys, I've linked down below the DTF film that is coming in and out of stock. If it's out of stock, there will be a second link just to take you to one that may be in stock. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this. If you did, please hit the like button down below and subscribe and I'll see you guys on the next one.